This great city has been witness to many strange scenes, but none so staggering as the one that played out here beneath her slumbering streets just seconds ago. An evil space ape bent on world destruction, thwarted by a six-foot-tall dog and a rabbity thing with psychic powers. A tidy conclusion to an improbable story, or so it would seem for about five nanoseconds, until our heroes turn and see something so unexplainable, so horrifying, as to render evil space apes suddenly quaint. How could you, Sam? There you stand, a sickening grin on your face, your great hairy mitts clutched around my dear little silky white neck. Mother warned me it would come to this, but I couldn't bring myself to believe her. I could be wrong, Max, but I've got a hunch this isn't us. These horrifying skeletons are meant to convey a message of some sort. There's a story behind this grisly tableau. Aha, a note! What's it say? There's a story behind this grisly tableau. Look, a highly flammable reel of nitrate-coated film from the dawn of the age of cinema. I'll just pop it into this conveniently placed projector. No fair, Sam. You got to pick the movie last time. Shut up and enjoy the show, Max. Egyptian-y. Hey, that looks just like... Thundering tin types of Teddy Roosevelt in a three-wheeled baby carriage with a bonus jar of mustache wax. That's none other than my great-grandpa Samoth, with your great-grandpa Maximus. I can't hear what they're saying. It's a silent movie, little buddy. Film before the invention of vocal cords. Can't find the volume knob, huh? Let me... No, get away. I want to mess with it. Come on. Oh, get get oh, off the... Uh, mine, mine, mine. Uh, no. uh, 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 something's happening, Sam. My aura is going all squirrely. I feel it too, Max. Some irresistible force is pulling me through the frame of that movie. Kringle. I want that toy box! This is one of those situations where it would be helpful to have a gun. Or psychic powers! Psychic powers, that's right. We keep forgetting you've got unexplainable psychic powers. Oh, yeah! Where the Sam Hill are you hiding? It's hard to believe we're really in Egypt. I thought it would be sunny. Shoot! If we do come out, you'll shoot anyway. What's your point? It's teetering. My psychic can of nuts! Which gives you super compresso power. And super pop back auto power. Never get tired of doing that. Didn't help us though. I can't abide violence in movies, Sam. Just in real life. Please put it in up. Nothing doing. This is starting to get good. Besides, we haven't got any other movies. Good old Charlie Hotep. Thanks to him, I am gifted with the miraculous ability to throw my voice into people and objects. Yeah, I'm still not sure ventriloquism counts as a psychic power. Shoot me if you must, but please, spare my little buddy. Thanks a lot, Maximus. Here I am, inside this fat suit. Wait a minute. That sap Kringle will never find us in here! Ha! There you are! Watch out for falling squid! <laughs> Let's take this toy box and skedaddle a little, pal.
Champion ventriloquizing, Maximus. Now all we've got to do is read those hieroglyphics again and the door will open and we'll be golden! Right. Uh, you don't remember how to read hieroglyphics, do you, Maximus? <laughs> Fat chance! But you do, right, Sam? <laughs> oh, this is rich! Ho, 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 ho! <laughs> Was interesting. A little skimpy on character development. That can't be the whole story. There must be. Yes. Oh, great. Did we just, like, watch the end of the movie first? No, I think that was the middle. Which one's the beginning? Not a clue. Which one do you want to try? He's still fishing for us under the candy counter. Shh, show's about to start. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, devotees of the uncanny and the bizarre. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Monsieur Pepperwit, and I bear great tidings, an archaeological discovery of earth-shattering proportions. My friends, I present to you the Sphinx. It's horrible, Samoth! The face of pure evil! The stage is that way, Schmucko. It is said she will yield her secrets only to one whose powers are equal to those of Samun Mak himself. Might you be that favored individual? I have come to your fair city today to issue a challenge. What you see before you is not merely a pasteboard facsimile, but a perfect recreation of the tomb's outdoor fortifications. To the one who makes it through the gate, I offer two tickets to Egypt and a chance for the adventure of a lifetime. You get any of that, Santa? Prize for the guys who can bust through that thing. Busting things is our speciality. You read my mind, little buddy. You and the Lagomorph take a nice walk on the Brooklyn Bridge, crosswise, and keep going. Ah, uh, don't you just want to tousle his little bald scalp? Ah, give it a whirl, my friends. The challenge of the Sphinx is open to all, regardless of age, prowess, or physical deformity. Remind me, what do we win if we beat this game? An all-expenses-paid trip to sunny Egypt. Egypt? Now, is that with the alligators or the crocodiles? Your ignorance of giant carnivorous reptiles is embarrassing me, Maximus. Spill the secret, buddy. How do we make it through this challenge of the Sphinx? I can talk you through the sequence of steps, but you must pass through the mouth of the Sphinx by your own power. To begin, simply step on to the beseeching mat. Beseeching mat? Your tongue. In other words, you don't have a clue how this thing works. 
course I know how it works. I built it. But despite all my arcane knowledge, only one, granted the gift, has the power to pass through. Know anything about the dame with the beady eyes? Mole people. The bane of my existence. Why are they always following me? Who's the codger with the ugly kids? Is he bothering you? You want we should pants him? That's Nicholas St. Kringle, the well-known toy tycoon. He's offered me a fortune to direct him to the tomb of Samun Mak, but his money is of no interest to me. Who wants toy money? Talent! That is what I am searching for. Why go to all the trouble of rigging up a challenge of the Sphinx? If you're the big expert, why don't you just go through the mouth yourself? Knowledge alone is not sufficient to overcome the Sphinx's defenses, alas. The Seeker must be special. That can of nuts looks oddly out of place up there. That is no ordinary can of nuts. It's a can of nuts from the Devil's Toy Box. What makes it so out of the ordinary? Far be it from me to divulge the secrets of the Devil's Toy Box. But it's just possible that this can does not actually contain nuts. Thanks, your impresario ship. Give the challenge of the Sphinx a try, boys. What have you got to lose? The Sphinx has awakened. You are indeed a seeker of substance. We like to say he's pleasantly plump. Place your offering in the divine nostrils. Oh, I didn't realize we were supposed to bring a gift. Let's do this later. Gotta let the batteries recharge. Fine. I like the birdie. Go on, beat it, mister. Yeah, quit blocking the view. Lovable little sprites, aren't they? I wanna hug them till their wee rib cages buckle. I'm not going in that way. Not even for a free trip to Egypt. God's name you doing with that can of nuts? Well, that was a disconcerting twist on an old joke. Power came from me, Samoth. My body's all tingly. I've never felt anything like it. You may notice a lot of bodily changes over the next few years, little buddy. It's all part of- I want to do it again! Hey! Now, where did they run off to? Whee! Think this substitute can of nuts will work the same as the original? I have my doubts, Maximus. The magic of the ancients. It's a surefire laugh getter, anyway. Yeah, but it didn't make me all tingly like the one the elf swiped. We've got to get that can back, Samoth. Have you seen this baby? Sure. She's right there on that milk carton. Get the hell away from my bag. I keep all my lists in there. Vendor lists, inventory lists, employee addresses, Kringle industry stuff. I don't believe in those newfangled file cabinets. Excuse me, mister. No, no more toilet breaks till the job's done right, understand? We, uh, we're not your underlings. Huh? I got no statements for the press. Beard of snowy white, nose like a cherry. Haven't we met somewhere before? Fat chance! I don't make a habit of frequenting the greasy dives in this low-rent neighborhood. But no doubt you've seen my mug splashed across the front page of your morning paper. Nicholas St. Kringle, the spearhead bobbles for Brat's charity drive. Nicholas St. Kringle, named Philanthropist of the Millennium. Nicholas St. Kringle photographed in Love Nest with team of Swedish figure skaters. <laughs> Where'd that other elf make off to? What do you care? He went home! Yeah? Where's home? 
That's company information. How about a cookie, Kringle? Go away! Oh, it's just my pal here hasn't eaten in 72 hours. And you had such a kindly face. Oh, for the love of... You're okay, but just one, Savvy! I don't get it. What's an important-looking guy like you doing in a two-bit amusement palace like this? What's to get? This paperweight character says he's made some kind of big discovery of a toy-related nature. I make it my business to keep up with all new developments on the toy front, okay? Why aren't you up there attempting the challenge of the Sphinx? My underlings are handling that for me. I see. Scared to try it yourself, huh? Scared? Nicholas St. Kringle is scared of nothing. Here, let me help you up. Keep your pincers off me, you drooling little cretin. If you had the teaspoon of brains necessary to do your job, I wouldn't be down here. Okay, what do we got here? Inventory list, profits, losses, naughty, nice. Hmm, employee addresses. Looks like Crinkle's employees all live in that elf ghetto. You mean Little Arctic Circle? Yeah. Want to take a little walk? Ooh, funny papers. Yeah, but they're all in hieroglyphics. The mermaid and the cockroach. Fresh from their tour of the great sewers of Europe. Shouldn't we be on our way to sunny Egypt by now? I'm feeling prematurely homesick. We need a good offering for the Sphinx. Oh, I'm not gonna be a virgin sacrifice, Samoth. Not again! Do you think I've got the talent to pass through the mouth of the Sphinx? You must have some talent, Maximus. Why not that? The ticket taker really should have honored our free passes. It took us so long to make them! Where are we going, Samet? Little Arctic Circle. Filthy elves! You pollute the sacred relics of the mole people! Ah, oh, lay off! Go on, burrow back where you came from! Yeah! Go chew on an earthworm, you friggin' undergrounder! Ha! I curse you! Ooh, I'm quaking in me little elven booties. Why can't we all get along, Samet? Because most of us are a little buddy. X got change for a dime. What do I look like, Rockefeller? Hey, Slushy! <laughs> get to what's the matter? You get off at the wrong stop or something? Swells like you generally steer clear of little Arctic Circle. We represent Toymaker's Local 614. Stand up and be counted! No contract, no work! Put down! We don't need that kind of trouble. We got a cushy setup here. Five hours off every other month. Oh, and we just last week talked the boss into taking the steel tip off the whip. Don't louse it up for us. Who's the dame you were fighting with when we walked in? Crazy old bat. Some cock and bull story about how the moles is the eternal guardians of the tomb of some joik. Sammy Matt. Yeah, and get this. Our can of nuts is really some kind of mumbo-jumbo voodoo drum in her creepy religion. And when I don't hand it over to her, she zaps me with the full-on gypsy kais routine. Tough break. Ah, banana oil. That stuff might kill him in Moldavia or wherever, but it don't play in the U.S. of A. So, a curse doesn't worry you at all? Nah, us elves don't believe in that magical junk. We're here to gape at the depressing squalor of your miserable ghetto and congratulate ourselves on our comparative good breeding. Oh, knock yourselves out. What 
God's name are you doing with that can of nuts? Boykin, what does it look like? Special job for Mr. K himself. We's in the toy and novelty racket, see? We swiped, uh, that is, we managed to acquire this nifty little gizmo here. Sports a couple of interesting features. We cracked a code and Boss Kringle makes a fortune selling it over the holidays. Which means big bonuses for the likes of us. Give it up. You'll never manage to reverse engineer that can of nuts. It only works in the presence of Max's ineffable aura. Right. I hate to say it, but you guys' auras are just plain effable. Ah, Guan, you chumps got no more claim on this can than we do. Only we got it, and we're keeping it, see? We'll see about that, you bonsai bandits. No, Maximus, I think we should go. Huh? They're only going to kill themselves trying to figure it out. Meanwhile, we've got the toy idea that's going to set the industry on its ear. See you in the funny papers, suckers. Wait a minute! The boss will pay big if we bring him a great new concept. And it's true, we ain't getting nowhere with this can of nuts. Tell you what, Polly, we might be willing to work out a tray. Give us your toy idea. If it's really a winner like you say, we'll let you have the can. No fuss. My Little Pony Keg. With braidable houses. Hmm, kids love beer. Yeah, but Mr. K don't. My first sausage stuffer. A fun way to dispose of leftover lunch meat, household vermin, and scabs. Ah, please, you're making me heave here. It's a board game. A top hat, an iron, and a little dog go around building hotels, and you're all trying to make each other go bankrupt. Interesting idea, but I don't think it'll fly. The kids ain't into capitalism nowadays. It's a coiled up spring you push downstairs. Hey! I like pushing things downstairs. Nah, dumb idea. It's an inflatable dartboard. Uh-uh, tried that last year. It was a bust. Point-and-click adventure games. You gotta be kidding. As a matter of fact... You got nothing. We got something, all right. But we're holding out on you. Gotta clear it with the boss first. You do that. Come back when you're ready to talk toys. And if your idea's as hot as you say, we'll kick the can over to you. Kick the can. <laughs> Good one, slushy. Shut up. Those round-headed rats. They can't do this to me. I, I mean him. Ah, that can of nuts belongs to Maximus by right of psychic possession. I know. But unless our great-grandpas can dig up a great toy idea, I'm afraid they're out of luck. Genuine snowballs, hand-carved by emigrant elves. Room for rent. <laughs> You'd have to be pretty desperate to take a room around here. Have you got a quarter for the hitching post? The horse got towed, Samoth, remember? Excuse me, buddy. I wonder if you could direct me to... Wait a minute. This isn't a real man. It's one of those snowmen they make to fool visitors to Little Arctic Circle. I never knew you had psychic powers, Maximus. I'm as surprised as you are. The spirit voices never let on. We're going to a lot of trouble for a can of nuts. Psychic can of nuts, Samet. Maybe we came at a bad time. Excuse me, sir or madam. I can see you're busy muttering to yourself, but... Why you break my concentration on curse? You in cahoots with disgusting elves, no? No. Wait! Mishka is a fizzle Einzefeld. It is you, not boy. Sirith, she just called me nut boy. The one with great power of a body to squeeze himself down to kind of naughty yeah. Oh, ya ja, ya, ja, it's me, Nut Boy! Nut Boy! Oh! Rotten, stinking, disc sick elves! So long I am searching after sacred kind of nuts stolen from tomb of some muck. To find it in theater, to see the making with glorious magic, not the boy squished down with fat doggy friend. Huh? 
and then to lose it to grubby little sacrilegious maggot elves. Oh, for the strength of ten moles to crush them to paste. You seem upset. Would you like to talk about it? You, not the boy and fat doggy friend. You will come to aid of pitiful mole woman. You will take Kanonot back from nasty elves and bring it to mole woman. Sure. The first part, anyway. And perhaps there is something mole woman can do for you. We're in need of a hearty chuckle. Can you read us something from your hieroglyphic funny pages? Let me see. Oh, this is a good one. <laughs> Mole maids creating much merriment up and down the Nile. In first pan, husband Mole say to wife, You very angry with me, no? You can see it's true because wife Mole have scorpions crawling from the eyes. In second panel, husband say, It's because you caught me. Oh, how you say, as uh, 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 making the monkey dance with the beautiful temple mole maiden who have the sensuous quivering nostrils. And in the third panel, husband is falling over backwards from great astonishment when wife saying to him, No, it's because you cut the cucumber lengthwise. <laughs> oh, you get it? Because, oh, who cuts a cucumber lengthwise? <laughs> it's crazy, no? I mean, can you imagine what kind of crazy nod would... Americans have no sense of humor. You said something about the tomb of Samun Mack. Oh, how I miss it. The happy pitter-patter of little scarabs. The smiling faces of the sarcophagi. Guarding the tomb has been our family business for many generations. Why did you leave the old country? Oh, tomb guarding business, not what it used to be. Nowadays, no decent tomb raiders to impale. So, family sent me here. I make it big in America, I send for them. We can't get through this gate till we read the inscription. It wouldn't be so hard, only they went and wrote it in some crazy picture language. Remind me what the symbols are, and I will tell you how the inscription reads. Well, as I recall, there was a foot, a snake, and two squiggles, and a bird. A foot, a snake, two squiggles, and a bird. How would you say that in ancient Egyptian? Foot, snake, squiggle, squiggle, bird. Works for me. Gee, hieroglyphics are easy. I didn't realize this was going to be one of those educational movies. Keep watching. Can you tell us how to say those hieroglyphics again? A foot, a snake, two squiggles, and a bird? A foot, a snake, two squiggles, and a bird. How would you say that in ancient Egyptian? Foot, snake, squiggle, squiggle, bird. Works for me. Gee, hieroglyph... Keep on cursing. Okie dokie. What's this? Do not touch. Is visual component of powerful curse I am throwing on Elf out the window. He think he can make on me smart guy wise crack. Ha! We see how smart he feel after he become a wombire. An umpire? No, no. With the uh, uh, sucking of blood and the sleeping in coffins. Oh, a vampire. Look, Sameth, she's got one of those newfangled hand pumps. Want to skip ahead to the good part? on the Disorient Express. Egypt, land of ancient tombs and odd-looking humanoid figures with animal heads. I'm scared, Samoth. What if we don't fit in? We've got to. Mr. Paperweight has charged us with an important mission. We can't let him down. I hope it involves asks. 
I love asps. You love the word asps. Tickets, please. Please get out your tickets. Now remember, don't breathe a word about our mission. We can't let a soul know we're headed to the tomb of Salmon Muck to bring back the devil's toy box. Cascading QB dolls and the four color funny pages smeared with spaghetti. Name's Earhart. Baby Amelia Earhart, the famous lost kid. Perhaps you've seen my milk carton? I have, I have. I'm a spirited little tyke, lit off from the nursery one day and never looked back. I'm out for adventure, and I figure you might be needing a cute little sidekick. I've already got a cute little sidekick. Yeah, we don't need to see it, Sam. It's not now. Tickets! Produce your tickets! Tickets! I'll take those! I don't think so! Open up and show your tickets. Everyone, be quiet. And invisible. I hope you have a plan. Open this trunk. Open it for this thing. Do you hear me? You can't get rid of me. There's these other guys. Shut up, right. Sammoth. I know what to do. I'm great with kids. Guess who's out here with me? Santa Claus. What's going on? Oh, oh, I hate out, out, You may not realize it just now, but I could make a very valuable addition to your life. I know all about it. Open up and produce your tickets this instant. In transcendental logic, you may isolate the understanding and select for more cognition merely that part of thought which has its origin in the understanding alone. Well, without intuition, the whole of our cognition is without objects and is therefore quite void. As a matter of fact, I have no idea how to quiet kid. I'm coming in. Hope I'm not intruding, gents. Not at all. Care to join in a game of gin, Rummy? Let me out! Stowing a board without tickets and transporting contraband kiddies as well? What kind of train you think this is? Ouch! Equipment malfunction? More like a mental equipment malfunction. Should we try another reel? <laughs> 